creating mobile app is so cool that you wanted to just be able to do it as a profession. So in today's video, we are going to walk you through the steps to be able to become a mobile app developer. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wiki. I am here to help you to get into web development, get into coding, and learning all things JavaScript. Reasons and benefits about becoming a mobile app developer, there's a plenty of job opportunities out there because mobile app is just becoming the normal norm of the society. Most of the biggest tech companies nowadays are all apps. Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Google, everything is on tiny little phone that we interact with every day. In fact, it's probably more important than my boyfriend or someone that I spend most of my time with. Yes, everybody has a mobile app idea. So if you know how to create a mobile app, you probably have a lot of chances of getting freelancing opportunities. So there are typically three different types of mobile developers. The first type is iOS, which means they are creating native mobile apps for Apple specifically. The second type is Android, which means that these developers are creating mobile apps that are for Android apps. So that's basically the rest of the phones that are not Apple. The third type of mobile developers are the ones that we call creating hybrid mobile apps, which means that the hybrid apps are technically a hybrid application that consisted of either HTML, web app within a native wrapper. So what that means is they're probably not native mobile developers. They're probably either desktop developers or web developers that are looking for opportunities to create mobile apps. And there are a lot of frameworks out there that allow you to do that. And in this video, I am going to talk a little bit more about how you can actually do that. So let's jump into iOS first. So in order to create iOS mobile apps, you would need to understand and learn this programming language called Swift. And Swift is developed and created and supported by Apple. So there's a lot of resources out there that teach you how to learn Swift. The other alternative is to learn Objective-C, which is basically the mother of Swift. So you probably will see some older legacy code in some tech companies that are still using Objective-C, but it's not a trend anymore. So when it talks about creating iOS mobile apps, most people would just tend to learn the language called Swift. And in order to do that, I have a few of the resources that I would highly recommend to go check them out. Some links down below in the description box, so make sure that you check them out if you are interested in getting into learning and becoming a iOS mobile developer. So for Androids, you would have to learn either the language called Java or the language called Colin. I've definitely seen a huge trend nowadays. People are learning Colin and moving from Java to Colin. If you are currently thinking that you just wanted to become a mobile app developer, especially for Android, I don't see a reason why you should be learning Java. I think you should just go ahead and learn Colin. However, if you do kind of wanted to test out the water and learning a little bit about mobile development and you're not sure yet, maybe in the future you want to do machine learning or web development or other options, then I would say learning Java might be a better option just because you get to have different opportunities out there besides just mobile development. For Android, I also have list a few of the options of courses and resources that I would recommend you to get yourself started learning. Make sure that you check out all those information. So now let's talk about the hybrid apps. So for hybrid applications, currently there's two most popular pillars. You've probably heard about people talking about Flutter or React Native. So Flutter is created by Google and the language that code in Flutter is called Dart. And it is used to build beautiful natively compiled applications for mobile, Android and iOS web and desktop from a single code base and because it's open source is free and is 
great for commercial use or personal use. A lot of people are coding with Flutter, so you got a lot of community support. It doesn't seem like it's that hard. It does need a little bit work to be able to um, get into learning another coding language, but it's not hard at all. I've never heard people were having a really, really hard time learning Dart. So now the second um, opportunity for you to create mobile hybrid apps is using this framework called React Native. So React Native is created by obviously Facebook because Facebook also created this framework that everybody was so excited about called React. React is used in mobile development. So when they create the mobile version of it, it's called React Native. And a lot of developers, especially web developers who are familiar with this framework React, they love using React Native. And including myself, I remember I learned React Native probably in a day um, during Hackathon when I was creating mobile apps. So that's how fast you can really just learn React Native. Though it just takes a while to really get good at it since mobile development is completely different than web development. So there's a lot of process and different terminologies that are used in mobile development that is different than web development. So I'm going to list the Udemy course that I absolutely love about React Native. If you are interested in that, make sure that you check it out. Um, if you do have an app idea and you're just thinking about just really getting your app idea into a reality, then I would suggest to go ahead and check out this video. But if you are actually currently thinking about becoming a web developer, I would say that make sure that you comment down below and let me know. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye!